to answering the call today's Facebook live it is Thursday August the 4th and I'm Peggy O'Neill and I founded this uh, Facebook community answering the call specifically for those of us who had this sense that there's something more to life or that life could be different for us and other people than the way that it is right now uh, or that there's a sense that there's something else I I'm yeah, that's missing that I want to know what that is so welcome as we continue that exploration today if you're here live please post in the comments that you're here live I love knowing you're here if you have any comments questions at any time please ask them put them in the comments and if you're watching this on replay also please put in hashtag replay and the same thing if you have questions comments put them in there and I will reply so again welcome to today's answering the call live and today the topic is the invaluable gift of a not so pretty reflection we hadn't seen before the invaluable gift of a not so pretty reflection of ourselves <laughs> that we hadn't seen before and so I recently had an experience it was just last week where I, I this other woman and I were, were discussing the work that we do and she offered up something about, that was relative to her work that was also influential in my work and I realized that I was a little askew with some of what I was doing and talking about. Nothing major, it's not going to hurt anybody or anything, but, but what it did is it was a mirror, a mirror that gave me the opportunity to see a blind spot and to see something that was not so pretty about myself. And for me specifically, hey Sharon, specifically for me what was not so pretty was that I, um, so I've been a coach for more than 30 years, practiced law for 12 before that, and um, in, in my coaching career I was always in the in the space of development, you know, trying to improve myself to get better. And then as a coach, also trying to bring as much value as I could to clients, potential clients, by learning a lot about a lot of different subjects uh, so that I, they wouldn't have to go read a lot of books unless they wanted to. I'd have enough information to support where they were on the path with a lot of different topics on their own path. And so I realized that what I had not realized before is that um, that I was applying that need for certainty, that drive to get somewhere, to have a like check mark. Oh, I've got that figured out. I would even tell people I've got this figured out. <laughs> so the joke was really on me because the path that we're focused on here in answering the call and all the work, or almost all the work I'm doing now is not a path of certainty. I mean, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh. But my blind spot, which we all have them, uh, and habits and patterns that I just I hadn't seen yet. It hadn't come to me yet. I hadn't realized quite that's what I was doing. I thought more I was focused on, you know, serving people and trying to have as much information as I could, which that part's true but it came with an underlying motivation of having to have specific answers to specific questions and certainty and that's just not possible when we're when we decide to well it's really not possible in life in general <laughs> right right i mean we never know what's going to happen in this second the next second but especially in uh when we when we are on the direct path to discover our essential nature which is fully one with source, love, peace, and happiness. And when we're on that particular path, or take that path, the direct path, to know our essential nature, there's a lot of uncertainty involved. Because we don't, you know, we think we have certainty when we're not uh, exploring that because we've got game plans and goals and families and jobs or businesses. And in this, we have the exact same everything there are even goals but it's a totally different context the context is that I'm one with the universe and that the universe is living through me I'm being lived and and, and if I'm staying truly open I don't know in my own life 
what's going to happen next? Where I'm going to go next? What's going to open to me next? And so the staying open to and being free, that's actually freedom. Trying to be certain is not freedom. It's like a jail cell because, I mean, look at me. I was, so, I was narrow focused, so I didn't see the world around me. So when we get narrow focused, then we really limit ourselves and what's possible. So, so with this understanding, as we explore, explore it, we want to let ourselves be uncomfortable and uncertain. And eventually we get comfortable with being uncertain because it's actually much more fun. <laughs> we don't think it is because we've been conditioned in a culture. We've got to know where we're going to be when and you know, when the TV shows on the movie, all of that. And, and so we're, we're not used to it, but, but that's where life is. And that's when we enjoy life is when we're staying open to what's in front of me now and then being with that in a way that's aligned with our essential nature. Now it's not a, and, and, and it's not a, there's not a, um, a, a script or a curriculum to do that. Each of us has our own journey. And the other uh, element of this that I realized when, when I had that perfect mirror, you're trying to seek certainty. The person didn't say that, I just realized that later. I'm like, oh my gosh, no wonder I had this blind spot. Um, is that, um, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, so with, uh, uh, anyway, so we, we continuously get to see blind spots or, or other things, it might not be a blind spot, but it's a, a mirror, being on this path is a mirror where we constantly get to, well, I'll, I'll quote uh, what Ajashanti, I don't know if you know Ajashanti, he wrote the, written several books, but one of them is The End of Your World. And he says, this journey isn't about becoming something which we're so used to in this culture, we're going to become something, we're going to get a degree or get a, a promotion. So it's not about becoming something, but it's about unbecoming who we are not. About undeceiving ourselves. Now, of course, I wasn't trying to be deceptive, but that's along those lines, is I wasn't really looking. So I was deceiving myself. And he went on to say, we don't end up anywhere other than where we've always been. So like I said a minute ago, we don't necessarily, nothing in our lives necessarily changes. So we don't end up anywhere other than where we've always been, except that we perceive where we have always been completely differently. We realize that the heaven everyone is seeking is where we have always been. So what's the value in that? Because you might be thinking, well, I want my life to be different. Well, the reason we want our lives to be different is because we want a different experience in life. And the beauty of knowing our essential nature is we go there first. We start with the experience of our essential nature and then align and realign our lives so that we're living fully and completely as this loving, peaceful being, one with everything in the world. Not a concept, but actually a lived experience, a lived experience. Um, and, and and if life serves up changes in life, then we're ready for that because we're ready for uncertainty. We understand what we're doing as we uh, seek to know our essential nature, which is really if people haven't um, established themselves in their essential nature, then and I'm you know I know my essential nature. I've had a strong sense of it, and I'm continuing to establish myself in that nature, continuing you know things. A mirror shows up in some way, or I, I say something I realize I'd rather have said something else, so next time I'll do better, that sort of thing. So um, uh, so for most of us, it's the kind of journey that it is. We step on the path, we know who we are right at the beginning in the direct path, and then it's a process of unlearning. As Ed just, I don't, did he say unlearning? No, he said unbecoming, unbecoming. Sometimes I talk about unlearning, but unlearning, unbecoming who we've been. So our being is different in the world. And so other things then may be different in the world because we're being differently different and we perceive the world, understand the world, and we're living in the world differently, even if circumstances haven't changed. Because back to the, the group name answering the call, because that call, any seeking that we're doing, change a career to 
to know who we are, to be happy. Any seeking is actually uh, that the invitation. The invitation, it's a call to find the answer to that, which is right here. It's right where we've always been, not where most of us have been seeking. There's another quote, a wise Zen master said, oh, well, what I was saying uh, about what uh, um, uh, Adjashani said, that we're already where we are seeking to be, and, and, and I just paraphrased it because that's what I said, in addition to what he said, but there's a wise ben, Zen master who said, a fat lot of good that does that does, a fat lot of good that does you if you don't know it. So, so yeah. So everything I just said, and then I and then I quoted from Ajashani. For most people, they don't know it. So yeah, it's a fat lot of good for people to to, um, uh, to uh, for somebody to say that, like for me to say that, or, or anybody to say, you know, we're already what we're seeking. Until people know that, until they know, oh, I, I can see that, I realize that. So, um, so, so, and so, and I've had that experience. I read a book many years ago called um, "That Which We Are Seeking Is Causing Us to Seek." I didn't really understand it, and it didn't make sense to me. So it's exactly that quote: "A fat lot of good that did me," because it made no sense. I couldn't figure it out. But here we're making sense of it, and we're living as we truly are. Um, and so then the other questions are, as we uh, reveal to ourselves our essential nature, then have we realized it yet? Are we, do we have a sense of our essential nature? Most of us are not going to have some big awakening experience. It's just not the way it's going to happen for most of us. But we step in and then we, then we, and we can realize it pretty quickly, our essential nature. And then, are we also realizing it in our lives? Are we expressing it in our lives? Are we aligning our lives with who we truly are? Are we living what we know? And all of that takes being uncertain as well, because if we, if we start aligning and realigning our, our lives, as we want them, I mean, in alignment with our essential nature and what we can feel compelled and how to live, then we're going to be doing things different, and we don't know how it's going to show up over there. But our perception about that, beliefs about that, emotions about that, all that shifts too. But then, but we're, but life is more uncertain in a certain way. It's, it becomes more certain when we know our essential nature. There's that sense of security, belonging, knowing, loving, peace. That's our kind of a home base, and it takes a while. To, for that to be home base, once we realize it, then we keep uncovering it, unbecoming, unlearning, until we're established in that essential nature. Um, let's see. And it takes trust, trust, trust in the, the 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 these teachings, these understandings of who we truly are. Oh, I know what I lost my attention on a while ago that I was going to say. So also what I realized that 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 uh, my desire, my need to try to be certain was aligned with being a, a, a skillful coach. To some extent, I mean, being uncertain is also a good job for, a, I mean, a good capacity for a coach to be able to sit in uncertainty. But this is a different kind of uncertainty. And, and I realized that, that I, not every coach maybe, but I had that associated with being a coach and I hadn't realized that I was still strongly identified with that needing to be an expert, needing to have expertise for clients. And so that also helped reveal, that, oh, wait, because I really moved into being a guide for people, being more of a guide and a support and a mirror for other people as we're on this journey. So I, so I was so I'm able to be, be able to unbecome at another level the coach that I've been for a really long time. All right, are there any questions or comments? Or any insights, anything came to you with this? All right, so uh, again, it's an invaluable gift when something shows up in our lives that, that maybe we, we could feel shame, we could feel uh, like, oh my gosh, how did that happen? How did I do that? How, how, you know, how did I not know that? All those kinds of 
of, of situations we we are in where it, you know we're embarrassed or, or we don't like to see that about ourselves maybe we got overly angry in a situation all of those are the universe supporting us that we can take those events and be curious and, and let them reflect for us where we're out of alignment with who we are. So that's the gift that they are. They don't feel like a gift in the moment, but we can start relating to them that way to realize, oh, those things that are really, I wish hadn't happened, they're great opportunities for me to discover more, to, be, to unlearn, unbecome, and to, um, and to, uh, and then to, uh, and to uh, release any emotions or beliefs that go with that, and to be able to continue to realign our lives with who we truly are and deepen the experience of that. Thank you for being here. One more thing, though, if if you're interested in um, exploring this uh, in a in a workshop way. Uh, next week, I'm offering a free workshop beginning August the 9th through the 13th called The Direct Path to Purpose and Meaning, where we'll explore, uh, not, we won't spend a lot of time on uncertainty, but the other aspects of this topic about knowing who we are, living as who we truly are, letting that, letting that sense of purpose in life, that sense, that need for meaning in life, We'll be exploring that. So we'll be exploring basically the essence of, of today's conversation along with other, uh, other topics. So I hope you'll join us. I'll put the link here in just a minute. Um, so it's, um, and it's free, it's free. And, and oh, and the other thing I was gonna say that's different from this, you can watch it through Facebook Live, but you can also watch it on Zoom. So the great thing about that workshop is that you can show up on Zoom and ask your questions live. We can have a real interaction next week. So I hope you'll register, join us, and uh, show up on Zoom so we can have some interaction. Sharon, uh, I think I understand that I can't make goals. All I have is now. Uh, yes and no. So the goal aspect is, um, is very interesting. My, now, this may not be for you, but in my history, I created goals to get somewhere, to know where I was going, and to line everything up to get there. And because I, that was part of, um, it was more, uh, most of the focus was about me supporting myself as a separate self, as a unique, finite individual wanting to get somewhere to accomplish something so that I would feel better get what I wanted, not in a bad way, but, you know, make the money I wanted or the job I wanted, a career degree, a, you know, the relationship I wanted. And most of us are conditioned to do that. And that is what's often called a personal desire, a personal desire. And the difference with the goals, as we know who we are, they're more impersonal desires. So the difference is it may not look, well, some of it would look different, in, in uh, probably how they're, how it's planned and some of the goals and the relationships along the way. But, but in an impersonal goal is I don't need it to make me happy. I'm not gonna be upset if it doesn't happen. I'm not gonna be uh, needy about it. So, for example, I could have a desire to uh, wanna get a specific job. Uh, and then have a goal around that. Like, okay, I, I want to talk to these people and I'm going to have these goals. But it's because I sense that's what's next for me. So it's a little different than our ego. There's nothing wrong with the ego. We need an ego to navigate life. But I'm talking about the ego that feels separate and wants to protect itself. So that egoic sense can go get a job, try to go get a job maybe out of fear or status or, um, uh, I mean, a need for status or uh, just because that's what they're supposed to do because it's on a, uh, it has something to do with their degree. So those would all be focused on a personal desire. And now I could go be seeking the same job, but from a different perspective, different perspective which is uh, where I feel inspired to pursue this job. Yeah, it still might have all the other criteria that I just said, but it's, but it's more inspired, I wanna teach people this subject 
and I'd really like to teach at this university and put in an application and being fine if nothing happens. Now it takes a while to get to that place for most of us because we're so conditioned to latch on to, to the goal to get a job and then we're hurt if we don't get it, upset. Uh, we, we worry about it along the way. So that's the difference. So we still have goals. There are things we want. Like I had a goal to be here today. I had a goal to think about what I was going to say today. So we still have goals, but they're, but they're, uh, they, but they lack the personal needy uh, desire to make that the goal make me happy, uh, that I have to have it. And so I'm more. I'm bringing the freedom quality and the you know moving myself in the world, and then trusting what what serves up, trusting how that turns out. Does that answer, Sharon? So we still make goals, but they're from a different perspective. They're impersonal. Okay, great. And I got it that you're trying to understand, but now you do. Good. Good. And that takes takes a while. I mean, we've all heard of, uh, uh, you know, that we ought to be detached or something. Um, uh, I, th I think that's how the Buddhists say it. I'm not an expert on Buddhism. Um, so, but what that really means is we still want to care. You know, I want to care about being here on time and and providing some material that hopefully makes sense and that, that support that's supportive of those who see this. Uh, so I care, but I'm also not. Um, uh, needy about who shows up, how many shows up, how many comments I get, if it does anything uh, down the road for my business or the, the group. I mean, from a caring perspective, of course, I want the material to make a difference and to make sense and that, but I mean from, like, am I going to get anything out of this? That sort of, uh, uh, that goes by the wayside. So I hope that makes sense too. So we still care. We're not um, not detached in the way a lot of people have interpreted that. Like, oh, I'll just go give my resume to this college, and then you know I don't care. Well, that's not what we're talking about either. Because we, as human beings, we care. We we I mean, the more fully human we become by living as our essential nature, the more we care. But not in a needy way. Not and not in a um, care like something's wrong uh, like so I care whether I get the job because I care about making a difference in the in the university and I care about the students and I trust if it doesn't turn out that um, and there's a cliche thing people say well it wasn't meant to be so maybe some people who say that understand their essential nature but it's often uh, I think somewhat misinterpreted uh, if I don't know my essential nature then that may not be the way to go <laughs> because that's another whole topic really but but it might not be the way to go because if I still believe I'm a separate finite person and something doesn't turn out and then I go well I guess it wasn't meant to be well if I believe I'm separate then I want to play in the world as if I'm a separate uh, in the beliefs in the the structures and the systems of that. So I might want to check in and see, well, was my resume okay? You know, what happened? And I want to learn from it, which we could still do that if we didn't get the job and we know our essential nature, but it's from a different place. It's from a place of care. The other would be more like, okay, I got to get a job and I got to figure out what I do wrong, did wrong. But, but I, or that didn't work, not necessarily did wrong, of course. But, um, but it's, but there's a different, can you hear it? It's a different perspective. I, I'm, I'm engaging with it differently, um, uh, so I hope that makes sense. Let's see, the goal, the goal. Oh, that's a good way to put that, Sharon. The goal isn't the goal. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's going to have other elements than just that. Oh, I now I get to work at this university, or I finish this. It's, it's got um, it's the elements again of of I do care. Uh, but I'm not, I don't have a specific outcome that it has to be. Well, now I'm getting a little complicated. Of course, I'll have to speak. <laughs> so the outcome is that, but I'm not, you know, because I have done some of these where I got off and thought, oh, God, that wasn't that great, but I didn't want to redo it, you know, so, um, so, you know, so that, that, that happens. Um, 
Okay, I think I think I've covered that well enough. But if I didn't and I left questions open, please put them in the comments. I will ask them. I mean answer them. Long story. Anyway, all right, so uh, but again, you're invited to join us for direct path to purpose and uh, meaning and I'll post the link to register uh, as soon as this call ends and again I'm really glad you're here and um, yeah maybe play with living in uncertainty and trust and how would that be for you maybe start with with noticing how attached we are to certainty are you specifically how attached you are to certainty and uh, okay great Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. So glad you were here. Bye.